let's find the limit of this interesting sequence that I found in a math magazine. So here's how we're going to build the sequence. We'll start with 9 over 1, and then 98 over 12, 987 over 123, 9,876 over 1,234, and so on and so forth. So as we move forward, of course, the next one will end with a 5 in the numerator, and the next one will end with a 5 in the denominator. And then, let's see, the next one after that will end with a 4 in the numerator and a 6 in the denominator. And, well, what the limit of this sequence in is actually depends on your interpretation. So if I were to look at this, my original interpretation would be that the numerator and the denominator just repeat through the digits as we, you know, run out of digits. So in other words, we would go 9876543210, and then we would start over, 9876, so on and so forth. And same thing in the denominator. Well, that's not the interpretation that's taken in the magazine, but we'll get to that. Let's look what our first interpretation gives us for the limit. But in that case, I think it's pretty easy to see what the limit will be. We could perhaps just divide everything by the largest power of 10 that's possible in order to get everything slightly less than 1, and we would have the limit equals something like this. So we would have 0 0 0.09876543210 repeating in the numerator. And then in the denominator, we would have, let's see, 0 0.12345678, and then 0 repeating. So you see what's going on there. What we did first is, for instance, took this fourth term and exchanged it for 0 0.9876 over 0 0.1234. And then if we do that, the kind of obvious limit of the numerator and the denominator would just be these repeating decimals. But it's fairly straightforward to write repeating decimals as ratios of integers, so let's recall how to do that. So let's observe that this numerator can be written as 9876543210 times the following. So the first thing will be, let's see, 0, 0.0 up to 1, and this 1 here is the 10th digit. And we know it's the 10th digit because, well, because we have to shift the decimal point 10 digits to get to the right of that 0. And observe that I forgot a 0 there, but I'll put it back in. And then after that, there'll be a bunch of zeros, and then finally another one, but then that next one will occur at the 20th digit. So that means there's 10 digits leading up, ending at that one, and then so on and so forth. But then let's observe that the same thing is kind of happening in the denominator. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. And then we've got 0, 0.0 up to 1, and that 1 is the 10th digit. And then we've got zeros up to 1, and then that next one is the 20th digit. And so that means there's 10 digits between those. And then the next one will be the 30th digit, and so on and so forth. Now, I guess we could write that numerator as well as the denominator using geometric series, and let's maybe do that for the numerator. That's, for instance, equal to something like this, the sum, as n goes from 0 to infinity, of 1 over 10 to the, let's see, 10 times n plus 1. Notice that n equals 0 term will give us this 1, the n equals 1 term will give us this one, and then so on and so forth. But we don't actually need to do that in this case because it's pretty clear that this term in the numerator cancels this term in the denominator, and we're left with the following expression. 
Now, this thing can be reduced because the numerator and the denominator have common factors, and it reduces to this number right here, 109739369 over, let's see, 137174.21. And maybe if you're interested to see what that approximately is, well, maybe calculate it yourself and write in the comments. But that being said, this is not really a beautiful limit. What we really want to do is find some other interpretation where the limit is nicer. And that's exactly what's done in the article. So let's look at that now. Okay, so let's jump into the interpretation for our second go at this limit. Starting with the denominator because it's slightly simpler to work with. So let's start writing out these denominators or the sequence of the denominators with a little bit more structure. So let's notice the first term can be written as 1 times 10 to the 0. And then the second term is 1 times 10 to the 1 times, or sorry, plus 2 times 10 to the 0. Then the next term is 3 times 10 to the 2 plus 2 times 10 to the 1 plus 3 times 10 to the 0. And I think we can all agree that the nth term might look something like this. So we're going to have 1 times 10 to the n. And you might say, well, oh, shouldn't it be to the n minus 1? Well, let's just reorder these. So this is the zeroth term of the sequence. This is the first, second, third, so on and so forth just so that it's a little bit easier to index. Okay, so now looking at that, we've got 1 times 10 to the n, plus 2 times 10 to the n minus 1, plus 3 times 10 to the n minus 2, plus all the way down, and let's observe that at the end, we will end with n plus 1 times 10 to the 0. Okay, but then we can maybe smush all of these things together into the sum as k goes from 0 up to n of k plus 1 times 10 to the n minus k. Okay, nice. Now let's look at what's going on in the numerator, which is maybe a tiny bit trickier, but let's start with adding some structure to this sequence. So we start with 9 times 10 to the 0, and then 9 times 10 to the 1 plus 8 times 10 to the 0. And then, let's see, 9 times 10 to the 2 plus 8 times 10 to the 1 plus 7 times 10 to the 0. And I think, well, looking at this, we see that the nth term might look something like this. And again, we'll rescale it so that this is the 0th, 1st, 2nd term. So we're starting at the 0th term. So we're going to have 9 times 10 to the n plus 8 times 10 to the n minus 1 plus 7 times 10 to the n minus 2, ending way down here at the bottom at 10 minus n minus 1 times 10 to the, let's see, 0. But now we can push all of those together into the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 10 minus k minus 1 times 10 to the n minus k. Okay, so that means that we can rewrite our original sequence or the nth term in our original sequence using these. So let's do that here. So nth term of our sequence. Maybe let's give this a name, maybe a sub n. So that's going to be equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 10 minus k minus 1 times 10 to the n minus k over the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k plus 1 times 10 to the n minus k. So there's one thing that I can do immediately, and that is factor a 10 to the n out of the numerator and the denominator. But observe, doing that factorization is just going to allow me to erase these n's in the exponent. So now we've got 10 to the minus k in the numerator and 10 to the minus k in the denominator inside of our sums. And then let's observe that part of the denominator sum is inside of the numerator. So let's see how we can use that to simplify. 
So now our numerator is the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 10 times 10 to the minus k, and then minus the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k plus 1 times 10 to the minus k. And that's all over this sum as k goes from 0 to n of k plus 1 times 10 to the minus k. So now we can split that into two pieces and observe that the second term in the numerator, in the sum of the numerator, is equal to the denominator. So that's going to simplify out nicely. And that's going to leave us with the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 10 times 10 to the minus k over our sum as k goes from 0 to n of, let's see, k plus 1 times 10 to the minus k. And then from that, we will subtract 1. But now, I'd like to rewrite these a little bit. And let's rewrite this in the following way. So this is going to be equal to the sum as k goes from 0 to n of 10 times x to the k over the sum as k goes from 0 to n of k plus 1 times x to the k where we evaluate this at x equals 1 over 10. And then from that, we also have to subtract 1 because we've got that 1 term hanging on. But now, I'm going to actually change this equality here to an arrow. And this arrow is meaning that we're taking the limit as n goes to infinity. So that means I can exchange these n's in the top parts of our sums simply to infinity. And then, well, perhaps we could evaluate these two sums. And let's observe that the numerator evaluates over to 1 minus, or 1 over 1 minus x, just using standard geometric series techniques. But then it has to be multiplied by 10, because we've got that multiplier of 10 on the inside. So it's, in fact, equal to 10 over 1 minus x. And then, well, what about the denominator? Well, we've calculated a sum like this denominator many times on the channel, but I'd like to observe that this looks a lot like the derivative with respect to x of the sum as k goes from 0 up to infinity of x to the k plus 1. And that's because that'll bring the k plus 1 down as a multiplier and then decrease the exponent by 1. But of course, this is going to turn into the derivative with respect to x of x over 1 minus x. So we've got something like that. But let's observe that we can rewrite that as the derivative with respect to x of 1 over 1 minus x minus 1. And I'm doing that just because it's easier to take the derivative in this case. We don't have to worry about the quotient rule or anything. And well, now this derivative is 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared using, you know, maybe the generalized power rule or the chain rule or whatever you want to use there. So that means here we're going to be left with 1 over 1 minus x quantity squared. Then we have to evaluate that at x equals 1 over 10. And then to finish it all off, we have to subtract 1. So let's see. Let's finish this whole thing off. So this is going to be equal to, in the end, 10 times 1 minus x evaluated at x equals 1 tenth minus 1, just simplifying those two rational functions. But now if we evaluate 1 minus x at a tenth, we get 9 tenths. We'll multiply that by 10 and we'll get 9 minus 1 is equal to 8. And I think that's a much nicer value for that limit than what we gained before. And that's a good place to stop.